Welcome to Section 2, Lesson 1 of the Drupal School Podcast. In this section, we're going to create a single-user blog. Um, this is going to be a three-part section, and the first part, we're going to cover a lot of the initial configuration of your Drupal website. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to create the first account, configure our title and some other things in the administration panel, adjust some of the theme colors, enable the blogs module, and finally create our first blog post. So in this tutorial, we're going to stick solely to our web browser, and we're actually not going to even leave our new site that we just set up. Um, in later lessons in this section, we're going to actually do some work with Photoshop and with CSS and some other software, but for now, all you need is your web browser. So after you've created your fresh Drupal install, you should read this page before you start clicking on things. <laughs> and uh, if you do that, you'll have a good idea of the order of operations. Now we're going to veer a little bit off of this, but um, basically if you read this first, we're going to create our first account, we're going to configure our website, we're going to enable some additional functionality, we're going to tweak the design, and start posting content. So let's get started. All right, here's where you want to determine your username. For our purposes, we're going to do some basic uh, configuration. We're going to have one user. Now, as a side note, I don't recommend generally having one super user as the only user for your website. When you're just getting started, sometimes I find this easier to, uh, to grasp when you only have one user. Um, so we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave this with my name. So this will be Elliot. And I'm going to put in an email address. We'll say Elliot at ElliotRothman.com. I'm going to create a new account. All right, and it has a friendly little welcome message, and it says, Welcome to Drupal, you're user number one, which gives you full and immediate access. All of your future registrants will receive their passwords via email, so please make sure your website email address is properly set up under the general settings for the site information settings page. All right, so that's important. So whenever we create new users later on, uh, we're going to have to make sure that our email is set up correctly because they're going to receive emails from the email address that we set up. All right. So down here, I'm going to initially change my password to something a little bit more meaningful than the one that it gives me. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. And my status I want to be active. I obviously don't want to block myself from using my site. Down here I can add a signature if I want um, to, to publicly display at the end of my comments. For now I'm going to leave this off. And Also you want to select your time zone so that when you make posts, uh, it, or when you read posts even, it displays at the current time. So let's find out what time it is here. It's 7.40 p.m. So I'm just going to go and find what that would be. I believe that would be nine or t 19. There we go. So we'll hit submit. And there we go. First account has been created, and you'll see some things change already. You see over here, it has my name, has a few options to create content, check out my account, administer, log out. I'm not going to go through all of these. And again, the purpose of Drupal School is to really just go through and build a project and kind of come across these things as we need to use them. So now that we've created the first account, let's configure a few things. So to do that, let's click on the administer panel, or link rather. All right, and you'll see that we have a bright red error message. It says, check the status report for more information. So let's go ahead and do that. And there are two things wrong with my installation. Um, cron maintenance tasks hasn't been run, and my fi directory files doesn't exist. All right, so we can fix this one easily. We'll run cron manually. That's all set. And just to explain a little bit about what cron does, that runs automatic tasks. So things like indexing your site for the search feature is what cron will do. 
All right, and then files doesn't exist, and we have to set the correct file permissions on that folder when we create it. So let's go ahead and do that. On the Mac, again, I'm going to bring up Finder and go to the folder where my site is installed. On other operating systems, you'll navigate to, this, to a similar folder, and you'll want to do basically the same thing. How you determine your file permissions may vary a little bit. On the Mac, you can just go to File, New Folder, and type in files and then right click on it and go to get info and then find where you have your file permissions so down here we can twirl this down and select read and write read and write and apply to enclosed items and I have to enter my password And then we're set, because if our users upload files, we want them to have write permission to just this folder and nothing else on our web server. Let's refresh. There we go. So now our status report looks all clean. Let's go back to administer and take a look at that. All right, so a couple of things that we can do right off the bat is have a look at all of the different blocks. Now in Drupal 5 this is laid out very nice for us. We have our main categories and descriptions of everything that we can do here. Now again I'm not going to go through every single one of these. We'll go through these as we need them. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to site configuration and we're going to look at site information. So you can see right here it says change basic site information such as the site name, slogan, email address, mission, front page, and more. Let's click that. Alright, so the name of our site, we don't want to be Drupal because, well, that's already Drupal.org. I'll call this Elliot's blog. Or, since my blog may end up being just a section on my overall website, I'll just put my name here. Right, and this is where my valid email address for the website has to be used. So I may not want to use my personal email address for this. Um, I may want to set up something else. So for now, I'll leave it as site at elliotrothman.com. If you want to add a slogan, you can do that here. I could say, teaching Drupal one step at a time. I will most likely end up removing that. Um, and if you want to have a mission or a focus, uh, you can put that here. I'm going to leave, uh, leave this out. Uh, I don't particularly want to have that. And if you want to have a footer message, you can do that here. Here I'll say all content on this site. Creative Commons. Share a like. License. Now I'll probably come back to this and grab the actual code from Creative Commons, but I'm not going to waste your time with that right now. All right, we're going to leave the rest of this alone. Anonymous user can be referred to as anonymous. That's fine, and the default front page is going to be set to Node, and you'll see that that'll be fine also. So let's hit Save Configuration, and right away you see that the site name changes. So it says Elliot Rothman. Additionally, up here the site name changes as well. All right, so if you've never used a content management system before, this is the beauty of it, right? Uh, all of your information is stored in a database. It pulls that information out of your database and spits it into the right uh, piece or different pieces of your website. All right, so that's all set up. If we click this, we can see our home page. And uh, that's all set up. Now you'll, you're probably wondering if uh, why that slogan isn't showing up over here. It's because it's up here, all right? So that's where that is. All right. So now we've we've created the first account. We've configured the title. Let's adjust some of the colors of the site. So if we go back to administer, we can take a look at under site building themes. All right, so in themes, you can see little icon previews of different themes that we can work with for our site. So Drupal ships with a handful of them. This is kind of the original plain vanilla uh, Drupal theme. 
If you just check, check enabled and choose default and hit save, watch what happens. The entire look of the site changes. All right, so Drupal is theme based. What that means is basically the appearance of your site is stored in a set of PHP um, and XHTML and CSS files and images. And of course, additionally, other times you can have Flash, you can have JavaScript, Ajax, whatever you, uh, whatever you want to build a theme with. Basically, it'll take your standard uh, XHTML or CSS website, and all you have to do is uh, implement a few PHP variables and a few lines of PHP code in there, and you can build, build a fully functional Drupal site. We'll take a look at how to tweak that later on in this section. Um, but let's go back to Garland, which is the new Drupal default theme. Hit save configuration. And we can choose configure. So Garland uses something that's new in Drupal 5, which is the ability to adjust the colors of a theme. All right, and so this doesn't require any knowledge of coding or anything at all. Um, and let's say that I'm not into sky blue so much. Looks good, but maybe not for my site. I can go ahead and select a different base color. So if I go ahead and move the color wheel around, you can see it update like that. And maybe I want a more neutral tone, something like that a little bit brighter. Okay, so that's going to be our base color. Um, I can choose a different link color, so maybe instead of blue I want red. And you can see it updating in real time down here. Alright, for the header top, let's say that maybe I want that to be white. Maybe not totally white, maybe Nah, we'll go with white. The header bottom will have that be kind of a nice dark gray. And let's leave the text color like that. All right, we can also elect to have a logo, have the site name display, have the site slogan display, mission statement. Um, these are grayed out because in this theme they're not available. Shortcut icon, all these different things. So for now, let's take away the good old Drupal icon logo. All right, and we'll leave the site name up there, and let's leave off the site slogan and the mission statement since we don't have one. And we'll leave the shortcut icon. We can always change that later. Over here, you can also adjust your logo image settings and your shortcut icons. And we'll come back to this stuff later when we do uh, how to adjust the theme. Right now, we're just going to make some initial tweaks. So I'll hit save configuration, and there we go. Now we have a new looking theme. All right. Now it could probably stand to be tweaked a little bit more, but again, um, since we're going to come back to this, I'm not going to worry about it a whole lot right now. All right, so let's go back home here. And we're just going to do two more things. So let's go in and enable some functionality in our website. So if we go to administer, you can see there's an overwhelming list of stuff here. But let's click on modules. Modules are what extend your functionality in Drupal. So your plain core uh, Drupal build that you download will ship with all of these different modules here. All right. Now by default, only a handful of them are enabled to uh, actually run Drupal, but you can enable these as you want to. All right. But for now let's just enable the blog module. Alright, so it has a description that says enables keeping easily and regularly updated blogs I'm sorry, regularly updated user web pages or blogs. Alright, so this is what's going to enable us to keep a blog. So we'll hit save configuration. Alright, so the last thing we're going to do is create our first post. So under here over create content this is how you basically build your website so we can choose a blog entry now that we've enabled the blog module um, we can create a page which is basically a static page 
we can create a story which is similar to a blog but has a slightly different purpose. All right, so let's go ahead and create a blog entry. All right, and the title of this blog entry is going to be Teaching Drupal is Fun. And for the text, we'll just put in here, hope you find this video useful. All right, if we scroll down, you can see that we have our input format. You may have just seen that menu animate, and that's because it has something called jQuery built into the background of Drupal. jQuery is a JavaScript library, and Drupal Core utilizes it by default. Now, there's ways that you can access it as well, but that's going to be beyond the scope of what we're doing here right now. You can check out the Drupal Dojo uh, for more information on that. They just did a screencast on it. Um, down here we have a log message. This is so you can put notes here uh, to other users, but we're not worried about that just yet. Um, input format, back up here, uh, this had, by default is checked for filtered HTML. So it allows us to really screw up the code if we, if we accidentally do so, or if you have another user who tries to put in some sneaky code in there. This will only allow these tags here, which we can configure later, but for now we're not worried about it. All right? Menu settings, we can choose where this will show up, um, but we're going to do that a little bit later because since it's a blog, it's going to show up in what's called a list. All right? Comment settings, if we want to enable comments, we can do that, so I'll enable them. People can read or write. Authoring information, since by default that's my name because I'm logged in it shows up there and that's fine and we can change the author date but it'll use the current date if we just leave it blank and for publishing options by default when we submit this it'll be published which means that it'll be viewable by anybody um, and it'll also be promoted to the front page that's gonna be fine for now we're gonna change that in a little bit um, and we can also elect to have this be a sticky at the top of a list. And again, we'll talk about this kind of stuff as we need it. So let's choose Submit. And there we go. It says, your blog entry has been created. And it says, I hope you find this video useful. And it says, Elliot's blog. And you can see that if I click on that, it'll start to list any of the posts that I make. Up here you can also see a breadcrumb, breadcrumb trail of how you get to this post. Um, and let's go ahead and just create one more post so you can see what I'm talking about here. So we'll do blog entry and I'll do this real quick. This is beginning to look neat. All right, we'll leave everything the same. Hit submit. All right, so there we there we go. Now again, if I click Elliot's blog, you can see that it starts to list these in reverse chronological order. All right, so in the next uh, video, we're going to take a look at how to make this list an actual link. All right. Now by default, it's already promoting it to the front page which is great but we'd like to maybe put a link up here to do that so that's where we'll start we'll also enable what's called taxonomy which is how you can categorize your posts so if you only want to view posts about Drupal or posts about Apple computers or posts about ninjas you can do that and we'll also add a uh, third-party module alright check back soon